As a student signing into the ePad, you will use your university-specific ePad web address, as explained during your ePad training. The page displayed here is an example of what the sign-in page looks like. Your university sign-in page will look a little different. On the sign-in page, click on the University Sign-in button and use your university credentials to sign in. When you have successfully signed into the ePad, you will be presented with your ePad homepage. Starting on the left-hand side of the homepage, there is the information panel, which contains information about you. Your profile picture will appear at the top, if you have uploaded one, with your name and email address. The large dial displays the total number of hours you have spent on placements against the target for your program. This dial updates every time you submit practice hours. Below this, we have the institution details, your student number and the cohort you belong to. Your academic assessor and personal tutor details will also be displayed. At the top of the page, we have the current or most recent placement panel. Select this panel for quick access to the documentation for your current or most recent placement. Next, we have the What's Next and Don't Forget panels. The position of these panels varies according to the size of your screen. These panels provide useful reminders on forms to be completed, and provide quick access by clicking on the form name. In the What's Next panel, you will see deadline dates displayed next to the forms. Deadline dates in the ePad are for guidance only. They only to act as reminders to complete the forms in a timely manner. It can be useful for both students and practice staff to see when forms should ideally be completed. When you submit a form from the list, the next form to be completed will be displayed until all the forms for that placement are submitted. The Don't Forget section works in a similar way. The forms displayed will refresh each time the home page reloads. Note that the proficiency form name disappears when it has been submitted once, but you will need to complete it every time you are assessed. Scroll down the home page to see the part and ongoing record of achievement panels, which, between them, make up your ePad. There is a part panel for each part. In this example, Part 1 is the current part, which is indicated for you. You can also see, we have panels for parts 2 and 3. We can view the guidance and documentation for any part, by selecting that panel. The part page shows details for every placement as well as the part-specific forms. You can access all your documentation for this part from here, by selecting a placement panel or the part-specific panel. You can select the Ongoing Achievement Record panel to see forms that cross over the parts or show your overall progress. To look at documentation for the current placement, click on the Current Placement panel at the top of the page. The Placement page opens on the Overview tab. This provides a useful overview on your progress on this placement, what has been submitted already and what still needs to be done. By scrolling down, you can view the documentation under the Start, Midpoint, Final and Anytime section. You can also see the forms that are to be completed across the part and those in the ongoing achievement record. We can navigate to the same forms via the tabs at the top of the placement page. These tabs will take us straight to the forms for each section. In the Start tab, we have the forms to be completed and submitted at the beginning of the placement. For example, when you start a placement you need to complete a placement orientation form. To preview any form, click the form title to display a blank form in view-only mode. You can read the guidance and familiarize yourself with the form before you need to complete it. To complete a form, click on the Complete New button. And on the blank form, you can work your way through the form to completion. From within the form, you can save multiple draft versions of the form, if this is helpful. For example, you may be working on a form but may not be at the stage to finalize and submit. 
a draft is created automatically. If you wish to rename the draft form, you can do so by editing the field in the top left. You can also delete a draft, for example if you no longer need it or you started this form by mistake, by using the delete button, which is next to the draft name. The saved button on the top right of the form will change to save changes, when changes are made to the form. This indicates that there are changes to be saved and you can click on the save changes button to do this. This only becomes enabled when there are changes to save. If you wish to exit the form, saving your changes but without submitting, click the save and close button. Next to the Complete New button, you can now see a number indicating how many draft versions you have. To open a draft, click on the down arrow against the Complete New button and select the draft to open. You can then continue editing the form, or delete it if no longer needed. The ePad will automatically save any unsaved changes after approximately 15 seconds of inactivity. However, it is better to use the Save Changes button as you work through the form, as this will prevent you from accidentally losing your information. If the form requires approval, the sign-off details will need to be completed at the bottom of the form. The form sign-off must be completed by, or with, the practice staff member, or you must have their express permission to use their details if you are submitting the form away from them. With the form in this example, you can hand this to them to complete their full name and work email address. Always review your completed form before submission, as it cannot be amended afterwards. When you are ready to submit the form, click the submit button at the top of the form. If the form was signed off, then a receipt will be automatically emailed to the practice staff member's email address, with the details of the form they approved. After a few moments, you will see the submitted form listed in the responses section, in this example showing the details of approver and the date and time of submission. You can view the submitted form by clicking on the entry in the responses list. Submitted forms cannot be amended. You can also use the ePad to record practice hours, where this has been enabled by your institution. The Practice Hours button is located in the bottom right-hand corner of the ePad page. You can select the button at any time to add practice hours. When you click on the button, the Submit Practice Hours window is presented. You can select a different placement provider and placement area if needed. If the location you require is not present in the drop-down list then you need to contact your university. You can select the activity type, the date and duration of the practice hours. The duration should be recorded to the nearest 15 minutes. The practice staff member who is approving the hours will enter their full name and work email address in the fields at the bottom. Just as with signing off a form, the approver's details must be added by, or with, the practice staff member, or else you must have their explicit permission to use their details. Check that you have entered the details correctly, as you cannot amend them after submission. Select the submit button to add these hours to your ePad. You can view the updated total practice hours for the program and placement in the progress dials on the home page, and the placement hours breakdown on the current part page. To view all your practice hours entries, select the practice hours icon from the left hand menu. This displays the practice hours page. On this page, you can see the full record of the practice hours for every placement. Your practice supervisors and practice assessor are able to amend practice hours entries from their account, if you realize that you made a mistake. Your practice hours record must be complete i.e. every shift accurately recorded, and correctly signed off by a member of staff with their name and work email address. Finally, you can exchange messages with practice or university staff, directly within the ePad. Select the Messages icon from the left-hand menu.
On the messages page, you can see all messages to and from staff. To add a message, type directly into the message box. Then select the send message button. When there is a new message, you will see a number displayed on the message notification icon displayed in the top right hand corner of your ePad page. Click on the icon to see a preview of new messages, and then select a message to access the message page. You will not receive any notifications outside of the ePad when you have received a new message. Therefore, messages should only be used for informal, non urgent communication. When you have completed your tasks in the ePad and are ready to sign out, click the sign out icon in the top right corner of the ePad page. This is important if you are using a shared computer.